Hello and welcome to the Womanifester podcast. I'm your host, Katie J. I'm a women's empowerment coach and a mentor to badass, game-changing women. I'm here to share insights, practices, and resources that help me and my clients manifest with ease. It's my hope that you'll apply what you learn in this podcast to your life. When you embody these practices and mindset shifts on a daily basis, you will notice profound shifts in your life. My clients and listeners tell me that after working with me, they have a deeper trust in themselves, a better relationship with their own inner wisdom, and they are more alive and awakened to their inner joy and happiness. If you want more energy, more self-love, more abundance, and better relationships, then tune in for your daily dose of motivational messages from me and my special guests. If you're ready to live life as your most authentic self and manifest faster and easier than ever before, then you've come to the right place. Thank you for joining. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Manifester podcast. I'm your host, Katie J, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Indigo is a writer, author, and speaker from the Utah desert and is known for reforming repressive cultural ideas surrounding feminine nature and sexuality. She awakens her readers as she urges them to pursue the path of feminine freedom by returning to their wild nature. This book revolutionizes the way women live their lives as it teaches them to embody and embrace who they really are. Indigo currently works out of her home in Salt Lake City, Utah as a writing mentor, helping women to find their natural voice and share their wild stories in books of their own. And Indigo's book is Woman Be Wild. Welcome to the show, Indigo. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm very excited to have you. So I first wanted to dive into some of the topics that you're passionate about and that you write about, share about, mentor about. And the first one is feminine embodiment and expression. What does that mean to you? (laughs) Yeah, this is a juicy one. Uh, For me, feminine embodiment has a lot more to do Uh, you know, than just looking or appearing feminine. That's not necessarily what I mean when I say embodying the feminine. What I mean by that is trusting your feminine nature and trusting in the feminine and feminine energy, that creative life force. So, you know, true embodiment is full faith and trust in your feminine. In today's world, that is a lot tougher than it looks for most of us. uh, It's our femininity that has been suppressed or hidden or, you know, in some way tamed and pulled back for whatever, you know, one reason or another. We all have different stories there, but uh, just culturally speaking, there is a lot of shame, fear, and embarrassment surrounding, you know, feminine sexuality, feminine nature, and how the feminine shows up in our lives, how it is expressed. You know, it's really been sort of defined and trapped in these two, you know, worlds of extreme, either the stay at home, you know, homemaker, or this, you know, kind of tough career woman, when in reality, you know, femininity shows up and is expressed in unlimited ways. And most of us fall, you know, somewhere between that spectrum or we embody both. And so, you know, for me, truly embodying and expressing the feminine is is trust in your authentic expression of what that means for you. And it's and it's faith in the process of learning how to come back to that center, wherever your center is, you know, com- and being being willing to disregard and drop the cultural standard norms or conditioning surrounding that. And do you think that that's something that someone can do on their own? 
I, I, I won't say it's impossible. <laughs> of course, anything is possible, but it is a lot harder, you know, without that sort of support. And it's actually the reason that I wrote this book is I wrote to my younger self, you know, I wrote, I wrote all of the things that I, that I wished I had been taught or supported in along my path. And I had other women do the same. I included a lot of women in this book who I had share their stories or their biggest pieces of advice when it comes to, you know, embodying your feminine, returning to your more natural uh, state and, and what that really mean, means. So yes, it can be done alone. <laughs> I think that it, it takes a lot longer and it's, and it's quite a bit harder. So a community of women, which uh, you know, which is what I think we are both here <laughs> uh, ensuring that we create is it's really important to have that in this process, a community of women that not only are willing to step into their own authentic power and embody who they are as women, but who grant permission for every single woman around them to do the same. That is when this work is, I believe, you know, ultimately the most powerful and um, the simplest and simple doesn't always mean easy. There will always be challenging days, but uh, surrounding yourself with women who are on that same sort of path, doing the same kind of work and, and interested in returning back to our natural feminine and that wild, you know, limitless state that certainly makes it a lot simpler. Hello, beautiful being Katie J here. Just briefly interrupting this episode to tell you about the sponsor for this episode. The sponsor for this episode is Online Women's Circles. That is my group. It is my creation, my heart-centered gift to the world. And what it is, it's an eight-week live program where eight women, including myself, come together to support one another, to learn from one another, to learn how to process their emotions, and to really learn how to hold space for themselves, their own growth, their own healing, and to hold space for other women. As we go through so many shifts and transitions in the world right now, I have felt a really intense calling in my heart to help women break down the boundaries of competition and learn how to support one another so that we can create a better world together because we always have been and always will be stronger together. So if you want more information about these online women's circles, the support group specifically for spiritual women, just like yourself, then go ahead and scoot on over to womanifester.com to learn more. These groups are going to open every other month. So even if you don't want to join right now, but you're interested and you might know someone else who's interested, head on over to womanifester.com and I look forward to connecting with you. All right, let's get back to the episode. When it comes to embodying the feminine, what is what are the benefits of that? Like what why would somebody be drawn to wanting to embody their feminine more? Yeah. So for, you know, for women in particular, but this does, though we're focusing on women, this includes men, right? We all have feminine energy within us, same as we all have masculine energy within us. But uh, I think you and I speak primarily to women. So I will continue, you know, to speak that way. Yeah. But for a woman who is the literal physical embodiment of the feminine, you know, to have that be suppressed, choked, hidden, shunned, buried, neglected, ignored in any way is stifling to, to the soul. That is, mm. you know, it is an innate part of who you came here, what you came here to embody and be as a woman. And so, you know, to not have, you know, a way to step into that or an understanding of what that means or, you know, support to, in order to have the courage to continue doing that, even in an environment that, you know, doesn't necessarily always support that sort of embodiment is, is really important. That, that is where your, you know, your creative power is. And uh, the feminine is also you know, where it's where your most sensitive innate gifts are 
you know, waiting to awaken. It includes, you know, your intuition and the, the more subtle senses. Like, yes, we are in a physical body with five physical primary senses, but we also, you know, have connection to much more subtle senses that in my experience are awakened through trusting in the feminine and that you know that is a little more of the chaotic or flowing energy but it is where all of those beautiful things are hidden and waiting Mm, absolutely and i think it's almost like not only do we suffer when we aren't connected to the feminine but the collective suffers because we can't manifest (laughs) our gifts and (laughs) everything that you just said. I love that. Thank you. And and to speak to manifesting as well, because I know that that is, you know, that's your kind of primary focus here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Manifestation is very feminine. I like to think of manifesting in general as beginning in a womb, you know, the, the womb or that, that place of nothing is where everything is birthed from you know so understanding your feminine nature and tapping into the embodiment of that and the expression of that gives you a very a, a much deeper understanding and look into the process of manifestation and women in particular you know we were gifted with bodies that do this <laughs> you know it, it is an innate thing that is literally, you know, coded into our DNA. And so what a beautiful body to be in <laughs> when we're focusing on, on manifestation and learning you know, what that means, what it means to bring something into this world. We are literally made to do that. And, you know, that is extraordinary to me. <laughs> Absolutely. And one of the things that I loved from your intake survey when you were scheduling the call that you mm-hmm. answered to the question, the question is, what is something that you've manifested in your life? And you said, I have manifested everything I've felt and experienced. We are constantly manifesting. We just aren't constantly conscious of it. Yes. I love it. Can you expand on that? (laughs) Yeah, I sure can. Uh, I think, and this is, this was a really helpful perspective shift for me when it came to manifestation and, you know, being the sovereign creator of my life was the realization that, you know, I think we, we tend to get kind of stuck in the process of manifestation and we'll we'll compartmentalize, you know, we're manifesting this. And so this is what we're focusing on as far as manifestation goes. And what gets a little sticky there is that, you know, manifestation where we can direct our energy towards one desire or one thing, manifestation is happening all the time because manifestation is present. And so, you know, all there truly is, is this present moment. And our choice is whether or not we are going to connect with that present moment. And manifestation happens when we connect to that present moment, where everything exists, where everything is created from, and where everything ultimately is. So our entire lives, yes, are a manifestation all the time. We just aren't aware of that all the time. We aren't aware of our power all the time. We aren't aware of our connections all of the time. And it's because we haven't been taught to be. And, you know, that a lot of that is a part of this like feminine embodiment and expression that I'm talking about. You, you have to be extremely present with your body and with your emotions and, you know, with, with your heart in order to truly step into that. And what's so beautiful is the two of them go hand in hand. The more that you, that you really, you know, delve into remembering and, you know, rediscovering your natural femininity and, and your true nature, uh, you, you, it goes hand in hand. You come to realize that, that, that teaches you how to manifest because that's all you as a creative being you know as as a creator that is all you do anyway 
So what a beautiful thing to realize that, you know, manifestation and creating the things that we want and the experiences that we want in our life, they're not just these, you know, little blips in time that happen every now and then. It's an ongoing, ever-present experience. And we get to choose into how much of that we participate in, we actively, consciously participate in. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. The part about actively and consciously participating in it. So one of the the topics that you wrote down that you wanted to discuss was the creation and and manifestation process. And so if someone wants to be an active participant in, you know, the so- they want to be that sovereign creator of their life, what do they what do they need to do? Like, you know, what are their next steps? <laughs> yeah, if, if again, to listening? me, it's, you know, it's very simple, but simple is not easy. Simple is often, it requires a lot to be, you know, refined and simplified in this sort of process. But ultimately, when it comes to manifestation, the the one thing that I would encourage people to practice is presence. It's like true, true presence coming back into your body, back into your senses, back into your feeling. Uh, that is where presence is. And you were gifted this, this beautiful body as a tool to help you remain present. And, you know, it's a shame that instead we stuff it with food and entertainment and, you know, whatever other distraction you, you want to add in there, whether it's social media and our phones or any other electronic, but uh, so often we are bailing out of the present moment through distraction and cramming our senses instead of dropping into our senses and using them and following them, whether that is touch, smell, taste, it doesn't, you know, any of them can, will lead you into that present moment if you're willing to stay with it. And, and follow it to its depth. Feeling and emotion will do the same thing. And so often we, the same way we cram our senses, we cram our feelings with, with distractions instead of, you know, following the fear, following the anger to the deepest, to its deepest point. That is where the presence is. And that's where all of the change can happen. And when we're willing to do that, when we're willing to practice that presence, using our sensual body, using our feelings, what we actually end up learning is how to manifest and create the life we want. Because that process, what is happening is we're clearing everything out of that is standing in the way of our deepest desire. But those are the gateways we we must walk through. And I think that gets skipped a lot, you know, with manif, when it comes to manifestation, we talk a lot about, you know, visualizing and holding a certain frequency and all of these things that we we actually end up being afraid of our own anger afraid of our own fear instead of using them as a tool to clear what is standing in our way and you know those those are our ultimate gateways whatever emotion is there and the body is a beautiful tool in this too because the body will hold those emotions so you know, my, my process or you know, what I will do when I'm practicing this is I will sit in a comfortable position and I will notice where in my body am I holding extra tension. A lot of the time for me, it's my right hip. And so I'll go into the hip. I will put all of my awareness in all of my love into the hip and I will follow that tension. You know, what is, it, what is that tension in my body actually causing me to feel? And usually I'll be able to, you know, come up, it will drum up some sort of emotion. I'll follow it to its tightest, you know, most resistive point and an emotion will surface. And then I will follow that and I will allow myself to feel whatever that emotion really is, whether it's anger, fear, resentment, judgment, you know, any, it doesn't matter. We've, We've made some of these emotions so negative that we're afraid to feel them, but they are a doorway, same as anything else, same as love or compassion and ultimately love and compassion are what are on the other sides of these quote negative emotions. And, you know, don't be afraid to feel through them because that's what it takes to process. So I'll follow, you know, let's say it's fear. I'm holding fear in my hip. I'll follow that fear, whatever thoughts come up, you know, that emotion is, is my leader into what is going on. And 
Um, at this point, I'll usually start to write down what sort of thoughts come up surrounding what I'm feeling. And in that, I will find every single time <laughs> what has been kind of, you know, standing in my way of being truly present. What am I running from? And, and when I can clear that, I can come back to the present moment, which is where I can hold you know, a frequency of love, joy, compassion, and create from there. And like that is an authentic place of creation, but it takes, you know, there is certainly a price to pay. There is a, a passageway into that. And I think that that gets skipped a lot when we talk about manifestation. It's not just about, you know, meditating and visualizing, but what is the work that needs to be done? How can you use your body as a tool to get there? And are you willing to feel it all so that you can come back to that present moment and create from a true authentic place? Wow. That was so well said. And I think like what you're talking about is what I would call shadow work. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? The stuff that, yeah. And I totally, I saw the same, when I was talking with one of my spiritual mentors and, you know, this was maybe a year or so ago and we were talking about like my niche or like where I am and where mm. I can serve in the market. And she's like, what do you see in the manifestation market right now? And we talked about that. And then where is the missing, like, what are people not talking about? And I was like, the shadow work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. And I think that, yeah, what people, um, it's interesting that we shy away from it because, you know, the magic is in the mess. And, you know, if there were no darkness, our light couldn't shine on anything. Our light has nowhere to go if there's not something to shine it on. So it's that shadow or that darker aspect that actually gives our light its authenticity and beauty. Our light cannot exist without our dark. And so how interesting that, you know, in our search for more light, we are shunning the dark. <laughs> and, and what a trap that gets, that gets us in. Uh, and it's our own, it's a trap of our own making because we have for whatever reason, learned to fear our own fear or to fear our own anger or to fear our own sadness or to fear our own judgment. And in wanting to be you know, these beautiful light beings and creators and spiritual people, I understand that, yes, we are gravitating more to the light, but what a beautiful it thing it is in this journey to realize that your darkness is just as holy and just as beautiful, and just as much of a tool as your light. Yes, absolutely. And and thank you for kind of going into that a little bit, because uh, I'm glad that you brought it up. I feel like shadow work has been a theme for, for me in my own practice and in my own life for the past year or so. And because of it, I've been, I've been experiencing an unfolding and just that constant feeling like I'm supported and guided and everything that I need yeah. so is beautiful. unfolding. Yeah. And I love, I love that you use the word unfolding too, because we don't have to break open. We mm -hmm. can unfold. And so even this quote, shadow work or, you know, all of the un discomfort that comes up as we're learning to create, manifest, and, and live the life that we were, you know, born to live, it does not have to be this, like, grunge job. <laughs> it, it does get to, like you said, unfold. It can be gentle. There is a sweetness to it. And, uh, you know, there really is nothing to fear there. There is a lot to feel there, including fear, but we don't need to fear our own fear uh, or anything else. And it does get to be a really beaut beautiful, gentle unfolding, like you said. Do you think that using the term shadow work makes it seem a little scary? I Sometimes I wonder that. And I feel that, you know, just being as it's been used, uh, maybe. And mm -hmm. 
it's probably different for each person. I guess I tend to not use the term just because to me it's this it, the work is the same what it, whether you call it light or dark. <laughs> it's you know those are two wings of the same bird and both of them are needed to fly. So for me whether I'm you know expanding in my light or deepening into my dark it is you know they're equal parts of the of the same progression <laughs> or the same transformation. And so I guess I don't like to compartmentalize or mm -hmm. and I don't like to separate the two aspects of the work. And maybe that helps me in not shying away from one over the other. Absolutely. I love that you added that helps me, you know, because everybody, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing. Everyone is going to, you know, connect with different things on their path and and thank God, you know, yeah. thank God that we're all, that we're all doing the same work in as many different ways as possible. Like what a gorgeous thing. Absolutely. So I would love to just know a little bit more about your background and how you ended up in this field. Sure. I stumbled into this. And when you say this field, do you mean uh, writing or do you mean spirituality? I guess all of it. The, your specific, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. your specific here. work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I really sort of stumbled into it. I grew up as the oldest of eight kids in a very uh, conservative religious family. And in my early 20s, I exited the religion that my family had brought me up in. And that was sort of, you know, my first step into all of this, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, there was just something pulling in me, in my heart that, you know, knew that there was more than what I had been taught. And so that, that started this, this whole journey of, you know, really comparing what I felt I knew to what I had been taught. And, ha and I, re and I kept realizing how often those two things conflicted, where my, my knowing, my intuition, my, and my own being seemed to know something that was often very different than what I had been taught. And so as I continued on this, on this path, I started to push boundaries on everything that I had been taught, whether that was religiously, politically, socially, in my relationships, it didn't matter. All, these, all of these different areas of my life, I started to push the boundary on what I had been taught, like what really testing, what is true for me here? What feels good for me here? Why am I only being taught, you know, why am I taught in such a black and white way, right, wrong, good, bad, better, worse, light, dark? You know, I, it didn't feel good to me. Uh, and, you know, especially when I recognized that I was being taught something is true and my, you know, another friend in another religion or another household was being taught something else was true. And, and, to me, it, it started this, you know, sort of internal pull of, you know, like, what does truth actually mean? You know, someone over here believes something so ardently and somebody over here believes something just as greatly. And, you know, what, do, what does it actually mean to find truth? <laughs> and so that, you know, in my early 20s, that's what I spent my time doing. And it was really just this giant experiment. I don't think I even knew what I was doing at the time, but I would just say yes to things. I would just say yes. And I would go through my own experience and decide afterwards if it was you know, a fit for me, whether that was a sexual experimentation or a sub substance experimentation. You know, I, I, religions, I did it with everything. I would just go and, you know, partake in the experience. And then afterwards, based on my own feeling and my own experience would decide, you know, come to some conclusion for myself. And, and what I found in doing that is that truth is not either or, it's both and often more. So I kept finding that, you know, as far as truth was that yes i had been taught pieces of it but i but it was very a very expansive thing it was an ever growing thing something that was true for me 5 years ago is not necessarily true for me today and it was you know this there was an evolution 
in, in truth and in what I was finding for myself. And so in doing all of that, I ended up writing a lot. I wrote a lot of things down. <laughs> and I always wrote as if I was writing to my younger self. You know, like I wish that somebody had told me this or, you know, where was, where was this book when I needed it at this time in my life? And so I was always writing as if to someone who was just a, a few steps behind me. Again, I didn't realize what I was doing at the time, but over the course of years, it eventually became a book. And I uh, scrapped version after version after version over the years and would only keep, you know, sections or pieces. And I, until I knew that I wanted to write to women. And so that's how I would say I ended up here is it was that very first being willing to separate myself from the environment I grew up in and test what actually worked for me. And after years and years of doing that, I became obsessed with the idea of shedding cultural conditioning or environmental social conditioning. And, you know, how, and like testing, how different would my life be? if I really did shed every belief I was taught to have and established my own. And in doing that, that's when I became the creator and the manifester of my own life. Or at least that's when I became conscious of creating my own life. When I realized that I had a choice in what I believed and that most of my beliefs had come from what, you know, people in places where I had been taught rather than, you know, from inside me or my own experience. Thank you so much for sharing that. One of the things that I like to do before I interview somebody is like scroll all the way, not usually all the way through their Instagram, but <laughs> I just want to see like the evolution because yeah. I know if you scroll through mine, you're going to notice the full evolution of this yes. like, <laughs> brand, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and I appreciate I just, yeah, I just feel like you have such, like your story, I actually really resonate with it a lot because I also grew mm -hmm. up in a religion that I left and, but I feel like you're speaking to me when you were talking mm -hmm. about like shedding the, all of the cultural con conditioning and like that being something that you actually set out to do. Because I don't know that I, I think I'm aware of it, but I don't know that I've set the intention to like, this is yeah. something that I really need to like get rid of in this lifetime go, yeah put my attention on yeah and that's that's what my my entire book ended up being centered on that because of uh, you know this 10-year period where while I was going through it I didn't know it was happening but you know in hindsight you can always connect the dots and when I looked back and realized it was this you know, the biggest aha moment of my life where I noticed that I, I live the life that I want to live today because I was willing to discard and shed beliefs that did not serve me and, and the conditioning of my environment that did not serve who I really am. And I think that is true for a lot of people that, of course, we, are, we have parents who love us. And for most of us, we come up, you know, we're brought up in really lovely homes, but that doesn't mean that we are born into environments that serve our souls. Ultimately, we have to create that environment because only we know our soul, only we know our truest nature and, you know, our unique authentic expression and what it requires to thrive in this life in order for us to really step into that power, we have to shed everything we learned and begin to establish and create our own world. And that's what I believe, you know, you hear all this talk about the new earth, that is what I believe it is. It's when, you know, enough of us are willing to shed the conditioning of our environment and create our own world, that's when the shift happens. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate yeah. you coming on the podcast. And I wanted to know where can people go to connect with you, to buy your book, and to learn more about you? Yeah, absolutely. On Instagram, it is at womanbewild. And then for the book, womanbewild.com. 
is the easiest place for that. And you can choose between a, a hardcover or a paperback and an ebook. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. This is such a beautiful experience. I love what you're doing. Thank you. I know that your time and energy is so, so valuable. So I want to just say thank you for stopping by today. If you enjoyed this episode, I would greatly appreciate it if you took a screenshot of you listening to it and shared it to your Instagram. Tag me at Womanifester and I will be happy to share it to my Instagram story as well. This helps us spread the word about manifestation, mindset training, and all of the good juju that comes out of this type of podcast. I also love connecting with podcast listeners. So tell me what your biggest takeaway is. Tell me what your aha moments were, and I will gladly share them on my story as well. Can't wait to connect with you and I'll see you next time. Bye.